I'm um, sure real real proud of our guys. Um, you know, given that we had a really really tough Saturday game, um, and just kind of looking at our reports, the, our guys logged a lot of miles against really good Penn team, um, and having a quick turnaround for a, a team that we had seen go up in the Carry Dome and win, we knew this was going to be a tough game. <laughs> And uh, I'm proud of the guys. Just um, you know, we obviously can clean some things up, but the effort, the intensity, the energy uh, was terrific. Um, I thought Coach, uh, you know, Bernhardt had a great plan for the defense, and certainly, you know, Coach Rupper, you get nine goals in the first half. Um, you're pleased with that, and I think probably most proud of Austin Henningsen. You know, just not a great day for us at Face Off X on Saturday. It's always a team thing. Um, but I know those guys are prideful, and, and we had confidence that they would come back, and, and certainly Austin was terrific today, and that was huge for us. We just got a ton of possessions and um, allowed our offense to get into a great rhythm. Questions? Bruce? Coach, it seemed like you went deep, deep into the bench today, uh, or especially early on. Was that because of the back-to-back -back games, or you just wanted to take a look at everyone? Um, I think, you know, having a quick turnaround, um, you know, having three days, three games in eight days is not easy. So um, we had some extra guys prepped, um, you know, we wanted to, and even during the game, we, you know, we talked about it, like, you know, we got up and the, the hope was, okay, we, we don't want to turn this into a track meet um, and then just get exhausted knowing that, you know, we got another game on Saturday, you got to finish this game. Um, but with 80 seconds, that's a lot of time. And so getting the ball and, and killing a little time and then kind of getting into the flow, I thought was important. Uh, we tried to substitute some guys so that, you know, Jared and, and some of the other guys, you know, just wouldn't get gas because uh, obviously there's a, a big game looming up in Annapolis uh, on Saturday. So making sure we get, didn't get too worn down so we can do some prep in the next few days. NPS Nonprofit Services has the technology and know how to achieve your nonprofit goals. We have all the tools that you need for your nonprofit to be successful, including tech support, consulting, development strategies, and business continuity to make sure your data is safe on prem or in the cloud anywhere all the time. Call NPS at 877 797 8776. We're easy to reach and easy to work with. Um, coach, in the first half, would you say that that was the team's uh, most complete? performance on all ends and, and do you think that can sh that shows you know a glimpse of what this group is capable of yeah I, I would say you know of so far this year that was definitely you know putting up nine in the first half and holding them to three winning face-offs uh, we were good in the clearing game uh, we were much better off the deck today which was great um, and we even you know coming out the get-go I thought their goalie played really well early um, but the guys just stayed with it and kept shooting and shooting so uh, I think it's a big confidence builder for some of those guys Coach, um, nine assists on 11 goals. Talk about, talk about what the game plan was and how the team was sharing the ball. Yeah, I, I think that defines this group. You know, like this has been a really fun group to be around. Um, just being around them, just, you know, even the road trip uh, over the weekend was enjoyable. Being in the locker room has been great. This is such a selfless group. You know, we mentioned it. Um, you know, at the end there, the energy from the bench was great today. Like this group really cares about each other. Um, our scout teams always like buy into you know their role, even though it's hard. You know, no one maybe you're not getting the minutes on game day, but they come out, they bust their butt. Um, these guys do a great job of you know kind of letting them know how much they appreciate it. Um, but even on and off the field, this group's really tight. Um, so I, I think they love setting each other up. Um, you know, Jared can speak more to that, but I think for him, he'd take an assist over a goal any day. After uh, Colgate's timeout, about 540 in the first, you all went to score four unanswered goals to finish out the quarter. What did you uh, tell your team during that timeout? Um, you know, there wasn't really anything specific. Um, you know, we obviously had to clear the ball, um, and then, you know, Coach Ruppert got us in a in, in a good uh, formation there, and I think Jared got an assist, I think, on that one. Um, and then, you know, Austin won a face off, and then from there, you know, winning those possessions and getting those balls were key. I thought both teams were super sloppy in the first half. I mean, um, you know, if you bought a ticket after the first 10 minutes, you might wanted to might, might have wanted a refund, and, and even talking to the Colgate coach, um, you know, he said the same thing. We just, neither team really, could find a rhythm and it was kind of sloppy. Um, and we were kind of fortunate that, that they were sloppy too. Uh, those midweek games are kind of tough. And then I think things started to settle down. And again, getting those possessions from Austin really helped us. Patrick. 
Jared, the last, I guess, 20 minutes or so of the second half, crisper offense than probably what you guys have had so far. How encouraged are you by being able to piece at least that stretch together as you guys move forward? Yeah, really encouraged. Um, I mean, yeah, like like Coach was talking about, just the first half it was like kind of playing a little pickup basketball, just back and forth. Um, I think kind of once guys just kind of got settled down, I think it's also a little weird vibe, just kind of midweek, but I think kind of once we got settled down in that second half, I think that you know really kind of helped us out in the offense. Um, for uh, Curtis and Jared, how did you guys balance um, these last three days between recovering and preparing for a good cold cold game? <clears throat> oh, well, you know, we got a really great trainer in Anthony, uh, Anthony Bignarco, Um Really great guy. He's a high energy guy, and he's always telling us what to do. So you know, we're getting our rest. You know, we're taking it easy on the field. We're getting our walkthroughs in. We're just doing a lot of film work um, on our own and with the coaches. You know, they really prepped us up this week. We knew exactly what they were going to run. But that's a really good team out there that we played out there tonight. So they executed exactly what we saw in the film, and they were just really good time. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, like Kurt, Kurt said, Anthony. You know, he does a great job. Um, him and uh, Brandon Nelson, they're doing a great job in there. Um, just kind of making sure our times and stuff like that for getting into treatment. Um, you know, and splitting that with film and practice. You know, was huge. You know, with quick turnaround. Uh, Coach, so kind of seen the last couple of games where you guys been able to get up a couple of goals, but then you sort of let Penn and Richmond sort of work their way back in. It looks like the same sort of thing was going to happen with uh, Colgate getting three on answer, but you guys were eventually able to shut the door and sort of hold on for a more comfortable kind of win. How are you guys sort of able to keep your heads more so than you did in previous games, or do you think there's any sort of difference between this game and the last games? Um, I think, obviously, you look in the second half, you know, we, we win all but one faceoff, you know, so you look at, you get, you know, of the seven, you're winning six, so you're getting the ball back. Uh, there's just some things that we just need to clean up. Um, you know, you, you you want to, especially if this was not a midweek game, we probably would look at it a little bit differently. But what we wanted to make sure was, again, it wasn't going to become a track meet because we wanted to get the win, but we also didn't want to get exhausted. Um, we did make some poor decisions. You know, we, we took some fouls, you know, and we forced play a two-man man down. Um, and had some silly turnovers. You know, we ran off sides. So those are things that, that we can clean up. Um, but those are things that if we don't clean them up, will kill us. You know, because we're getting extra possessions at the faceoffs, and, and then we're just giving them back. So again, um, just this group, we've said it all along. We, the biggest thing was just to grow and improve um, and just find a way, which I couldn't be more proud of the guys on Saturday. If you look at the stats, there's no way we should have won that game. And we've got our butt kicked on the ground uh, at the X, um, but these guys played with a lot of heart and just fought on, in our transition game, um, and Danny kind of bailed us out. So uh, we've talked about every game. It could be somebody different, um, and today it was Austin. Uh, last Saturday it was a tough day for him, but the other guys kind of picked it up and helped him. So if we can get everybody on the same page, um, I'm really excited about where we can go. Talking about the goalie, the guys made some spectacular saves you warm these guys up. Does he do this in practice or just in the games? Well, if I'm shooting on him, like everybody has confidence. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> and the confidence, the, the real test comes when like the good players shoot on them. You know, a 50 year old guy shooting on them, um, you know, it does build confidence because I'm a terrible shooter. But um, Dan's been great. Um, he's a guy that's worked really hard the last a few years. I think you, what you see from Dan is the byproduct of a guy who loves lacrosse. But the last two years, you know, Dan was starting, but uh, Dan Morse was starting, but Dan, like Dolan, would stay after practice literally every day and take shots. And, um, you know, it, to me, that's like the, the a great teammate that's really like trying to help everybody else out and just make them better, knowing he's probably not playing on Saturday. But the byproduct for him was he's getting all these good shooters shooting on him above and beyond practice, and then he's getting confidence, um, and he would drive some of our guys crazy the last couple of years. Um, so we knew we had good potential there, um, and I think Dan is getting more comfortable. I think it's hard, you know, looking at the last few guys we've had. Um, those are big shoes to walk into. Uh, but we only ask Dan to just be the best Dan Dolan he can be, uh, play the way that he feels most comfortable. Uh, the guys have a ton of confidence in him. He's an awesome young man who's got strong faith. Um, he's just a joy to be around. So just awesome to see him have so much success. A couple quickies for the players. Uh, Curtis, 29 to 10 last week, you lost ground balls. It doesn't happen to Maryland. Was that your focal point as leader of the defense? And Jared, I'd like to hear you uh, espouse about how Dubik 
has really integrated himself into the attack. So, yeah, <clears throat> just to touch on that ground ball thing, um, you know, Terps, that's just what we are. We're hard-nosed guys. We got to get our nose down in there and get those ground balls. You know, if it's a tough situation, we expect to come out on top with those. Um, so that was a, kind of a big focal point, you know, just with the energy trying to get our guys going because, you know, we got beat up by Penn. That's a really good team that uh, Penn had. So they were really tough. You know, it was their first game. They came out firing. I don't think we were a little bit ready for that. And uh, it showed with the ground balls because, you know, they beat us on that. And uh, I think this game we came out a little bit stronger. You know, we had the energy the entire time. And I think our guys really put their head down in there and kind of played a little bit more turp lacrosse. So I was really pleased there. Yeah, I think it just goes back to kind of doing your job. Uh, I think, you know, Lou kind of knows what he has to do. Um, you know, it may, may not be, you know, you know, everyone may not know, you know, who Lou is and stuff like that, you know, right now. But he has done a tremendous job just leading our team communicating on and off the field, and I think that's really kind of showed on the field. Curtis, um, Colgate has a really good top six on offense. You guys hold them, I think, eight below their, their season average so far. What was the game plan? What were you guys seeing out there? Well, heck, I mean, Coach uh, Bernhardt, you know, he put in a really good plan uh, this week. You know, we had a really good job on the scout team. You know, we may not have went full go in, in the practice uh, the practices that we had, but when we were out there, we were dialed in. You know, everyone knew exactly what we had to do. We um, we started anticipating things really well, and, and it was just going really good for us. You know, but that Colgate team out there, that's a really good team. Um, you know, they, they put up their numbers, and, and they got some really good Dodgers and scores on that team. That's a yeah. slick group. That, that top slick. six is really – and their second yeah. midfield is pretty good second midfield. Yeah, they, they give them a open, they got it. Coach Curtis touched on it a little bit before, but 35 ground balls today while Colgate only had 22. Can you talk about the hustle and effort in your team, uh, of your team today? Yeah, and, and I told the guys the same thing. Sometimes when you win face-offs, that number gets manipulated a little bit, right? Because if you're winning face-offs, you're going to be up. Um, but there were just, I, I felt like on Saturday, there were times where we definitely came up with some tough ground balls. But I think over the course of the 60 minutes, if you said which team was better off the ground, I think Penn was. Um, and again, I want to give them credit. And there were some good plays that we made. Certainly the last one that Nick picked up was the most important one. And then we pushed the ball in transition. But um, that is just a pride thing. Um, it's a hard thing to swallow. You just kind of have to move on and, and focus on it and talk about it. We couldn't do a lot of ground ball drills the last couple days. It was really more about getting the guys back because that was a physical game. Um, and it was a, a, just a real up and down game. We, we kind of track our numbers. And that was by far the biggest workload we had had. So um, proud of that for sure. Um, that's, to me, something that Maryland's always been good at. And when we're not at at the, the standard we need to be. We just got to go back to work. One more. Yeah. On the defensive side, it looks like you guys were able to push them off of the spot. I saw several times they almost went belly to belly with you guys, and you actually pushed them backwards. Do you feel that you were beating them to the spot or just more physical today? I mean, it kind of goes back to that turf uh, mentality that I kind of touched on with the ground balls. You know, we kind of got we had to kind of get back to that after uh, a, pen, a very good Penn team kind of gave it to us on those ground balls. You know, I was just trying to bring the energy with our guys down there, really get back to that turf lacrosse and just playing a hard nosed uh, defense that we're always known for. So, and I just hit my hat to Colgate. You know, they they had us in some really good plays. You know, they like Coach Shulman said, they're a very slick group. You know, they had some openings. Uh, they could have made us pay a little bit more, but we were very fortunate today. And and Coach Bernhardt actually. We prepared for a couple plays that they had not shown, but we thought they might run, and they actually ran it the other way. And good they job, did. yeah, they you did. covered, yeah, you covered it. So it was a play that another team ran last year. Um, we had a hunch, and they actually ran it the other way, and you covered it. So that was really good. All right, thanks, guys. Appreciate it.